thank you for listening or watching to another message from you, Pastor Alan Pillay from Living Well Church Online. I hope this message encourages you. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your comments and thank you for subscribing. It just helps us keep in touch with you. I want to entitle this morning's message, No Honor, No Distance, No Forgetting. Let's read the story in uh, uh, from the Bible in John 4. 43 to 54 from the NIV, a few verses. After the two days, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, for they also had been there. Once more, he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and begged him to come and heal his son, who was close to death. Unless you people see signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, Sir, come down before my child dies. Go, Jesus replied, your son will live. The man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that the boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. Then the father realized that this was the exact time in which Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and his whole household believed this was the second sign Jesus had performed after coming from Judea to Galilee. The story is simple. There was this man who was a high official in Herod's uh, palace. He was uh, basically uh, facing a dilemma. And the dilemma was that his son uh, had got sick with fever and was close to death. And uh, some of the other news had got to him that Jesus was able to heal his son. And he goes to a village where Jesus had just come uh, previously being in Samaria. He come to Cana and in Galilee and he pleads with Jesus uh, saying, please, can you come and heal my son? And Jesus says to him, no, you go now. Um, your son will be healed. Uh, and, and so he goes on his way. And as he goes on his way, it takes him probably 24 hours to get home. He probably had other business uh, to attend before going. And uh, when he goes home, as he was approaching home, his servants come to him and say, your son is feeling better and he's going to live. And the time of the healing is coincidental uh, to the time Jesus made the pronunciation that his son will live. And uh, I just want to bring a few points uh, around the story uh, so that you might be encouraged. Jesus said that a prophet has no honor in his own town. So the first point I want to bring is no honor in your hometown. Jesus says that familiarity breeds contempt. The story is more clearer in another passage in Matthew 13, 53 to 58 about a prophet not receiving honor or uh, in his own town or in his own country. Uh, when Jesus had finished telling these stories, and illustrations, he left that part of the country and returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter's son. And, and we know Mary, his mother and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own town and among his own family. And so they did not so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. There, there's a lovely uh, uh, story verses in the Bible that tells you about Jesus's family, his surrounding, and the people that were in the neighborhood of his birth. And they uh, uh, get offended at Jesus at his glorious teachings, all his wonderful teaching, teachings that probably went over their head. And uh, 
and he noticed that they have a lack of faith and he wasn't able to do much miracles there because they despised him. And that's the background of the story that Jesus said a leader is not honored in his own city because there's always familiarity, prejudices, and there's always, uh, but he's always revered in foreign places. You go other places, people accept you, they honor you, they revere you in a sense of respect you. Uh, sometimes uh, people think meanly of their own and think generously of a stranger. Uh, often people will compare you with, with another. They will shower heaps of praises upon another leader in your circle and they will ignore you. And I, I've been exposed to that where sometimes, you know, you compare to other people. Oh, he's such a, a good leader. He's such a good thing. And you can't be offended at that. That comes with the territory. And I want to uh, encourage you that sometimes many of you have been helping people. You've been uh, doing the blood, sweat and tears, going out of your way to help people. But sometimes familiarity breeds contempt. Um, you know what, friend? Sometimes when people don't honor you, guess what? You don't have to despair. If Jesus went through that, he didn't get the honor he deserved. He didn't get the respect he deserved. Let me tell you, you yourself will not be immune from that. That happens to the best of all of us. You might not get the honor in your own city because familiarity breeds contempt. You know, what about you today? If you, those that uh, love Jesus and were close to him, they didn't respect him. They didn't honor him uh, as the uh, people in other towns honored him. What about you? Are you familiar with Jesus to the point of contempt? Are you honoring him today? I hope that is something you could answer honestly. Do you follow Jesus and do you honor him? Let's look at another point today. No distance in prayer. You know, this royal official, he wanted Jesus to do something miraculous. He wanted Jesus to come with him back to another village about 15 miles, which is about 25 kilometers away. And those days they didn't have Uber. They didn't have taxis. They probably did the hard yards and they walked. And uh, it would probably take a long time to get to the area. He begged Jesus to come and said, Jesus, would you come and uh, heal my son? Um, so, you know, and uh, Jesus told him, no, you need to go and your son will be healed. You know, so many times we want God to answer our prayer on our terms. But, you know, we've got to accept that God will answer your prayer his way. I want you to get that, friend, because that will take away a lot of disappointment and prayer. We have an idea how God should answer our prayer. But many times from my own experience, I've seen God will always and, uh, and mostly deliver prayers in a way you don't even see fit. Sometimes we get disappointed that God answers our prayers differently. And sometimes we lose hope in the waiting. You know, in uh, the beginning of 2020, uh, Vani and I had decided, uh, in fact, it was happening six months prior to that. We had decided that we wanted to transition from being church pastors to pastors. There's a big difference. Being a leader of a church is different from being um, a leader of uh, people in a sense. We, we wanted to, after 12 years, we decided our, our time was coming to an end. We were growing on, going on in life, and we wanted to transition the church. We loved our church. We, uh, we, we, we did have our struggles, uh, but we loved the church, but we needed to change our assignment. I had received so much assurance that my assignment was changing. I needed to turn the field of my work. And so we interviewed a couple and uh, they, after many having attempts of many couples trying to hand over uh, for them into transition as the new leaders of our church. And uh, we had interviewed this couple and they were a lovely couple and uh, we agreed, we negotiated, we, we uh, made a proposal, we put them uh, that before the board and to them and thinking that was the couple and our time would now uh, transition uh, uh, from our leadership to them uh, in the next six months following their appointment. And about the last minute, they decided to say no. And they, it was such a disappointment. I was so discouraged. I was, uh, uh, I was feeling like God had let me down. Lord, I was praying for this opportunity to, to, to transition out of the church leadership into uh, chaplaincy and other uh, functions that I do now. And I felt 
God had rejected my prayer. God had left me in the lurch. But you know what, friend? Uh, this is what I was just telling you. Sometimes we pray, God, do this, God, do that. But you know what? God always wants the best for you. And uh, not long after the disappointing no from this couple, COVID happened. And when COVID happened, church, our church had been shut for six months. There was no um, church, so there was very little income coming in. And I look back and I thought, God, you helped us dodge a bullet with this couple saying no, because had we persisted with it or had it happened, um, we would have had to put them on staff and pay their salary and church was closed. And now, you know, that's not a fun thing when funds are not coming in. And I just started to thank God. I said, God, how could I have just rejected your answer to my prayer? You just answered my prayer, but in a different circumstances to what I was expecting. And I learned my lesson that way, that God sometimes answers prayer differently like what happened then. And, uh, you know, followers of Jesus, I want to say to you today, don't be discouraged when you pray and think and you're thinking nothing has happened. The main thing is you should pray. So my question to you, do you pray? Do you talk to Jesus as, at, at all? Does God answers, answer all our prayers? From my experience, the answer is definitely yes. Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes God's answer of our prayers is wait a while. But I tell you what, when God takes time to answer your prayer, it doesn't mean a denial. It just means that he's got something better. And this man that came to Jesus said, heal my son. That's the way he wanted. He said, come to my house and heal my son. Jesus said, no, go your way. Friend, I want to tell you something. God will never answer your prayer exactly the way you're asking. But I do have this assurance to encourage you here today. God will answer your prayer. There is no distance in prayer, friend. The next point we can hear, learn from that uh, mir miraculous divine intervention. There's no distance in prayer. Jesus didn't go to his house personally, but by his power, by his spirit, he healed that man. Sir Isaac Newton said, uh, said this, um, I can take my telescope and look millions of miles into space, but I can go away into my room and in prayer get nearer to God in heaven than I can when assisted by all the telescopes of earth. Basically putting it, there is no distance in prayer. I could pray for you today while you far away, maybe in South Africa or America or England, and God will still answer your prayer. Friend, I pray for people and many people pray for me. We are separated by distance, but I want to say to you, there is no distance in prayer. You could pray for anything, anyhow, and anywhere, and God will answer your prayer. So how much faith did the official have uh, for God to heal him? The Bible says he probably had faith, but he didn't have faith enough. So I want to ask you, how much faith do you need for your prayers to have been answered? As small as a mustard seed. So he goes home, and while on his way, he's told that his son is better, and he's now living, and he found out that was the exact time that Jesus pronounced that his son will be healing. You've got to believe that God can answer your prayer anytime, anywhere, and anyhow. The third point I want to bring to you, my friend, is no forgetting the miracle. No honor, no distance in prayer, and no forgetting the miracle. You know, the Bible says after this miracle of his son being healed, this man and his old household believed. What did you do after your miracle? Let me ask you, what did you do after your miracle? Did you just forget the stress you encountered before the answer to prayer? Or just you just go on with your usual way of life again? Let me tell you, this man and his whole household uh, served the Lord. And you know what? Bible commentators say that this royal official was Chusa who was a very powerful official in King Herod's uh, palace. His wife's name was Joanna. And this is what's important about Joanna. She herself was healed of infirmity and paid Jesus a debt of love. She was one of the lesser known disciples that uh, Jesus called. And she supported, amongst other women, Jesus' ministry upon earth from her own means. We read that in Luke 8, 1 to 3. 
After the crucifixion, Johanna prepared one of the women that prepared his body for a decent burial. We see that in Luke 23, 55 to 56. And also we read that Johanna was the first to experience the resurrection of Jesus. She came on that Easter morning and was there and Jesus addressed them as uh, women, who are you looking for? She was one of them. I want to tell you something that Johanna remembered the Lord. She did not forget the Lord. She understood what uh, God had done for her personally and for her son, that he was the one who healed them. She remembered the Lord. She remembered what God had done for her and her household. She honored the Lord in his ministry, even to, the, to, the, to his death and resurrection. And she was there at the beginning of the formation of the new church, the day of Pentecost, Joanna was there because she remembered the Lord, friend. There might be no honor for you in your own time. You might know there is no distance in prayer. But the best thing of all, you have to remember that we should never forget what the Lord has done. And one day I believe we will see Joanna who didn't get much accolade like the other apostles. She wasn't the well-known. She wasn't the important one. She wasn't the popular one or the famous one. But she was known for remembering what Jesus had done for her and her family. Friend, she will be doing the same thing when we see her. She will be honoring God. She will be praying uh, to God and worshiping Jesus. And she will be remembering a Lord Jesus. How about you, my friend? Can you be like Joanna? How sometimes we remember God in our pain and in our poverty, but we forget him in our pleasure and our prosperity. I want to repeat that. Sometimes we, re we forget, we remember God in our pain and in our poverty, but we forget him in our pleasure and our prosperity. Don't be like that friend. Let us not forget, but let us continually say like Joanna, come and see what the Lord has done. I'll give you a few quotes. We have to thank God for what he did, for what he is doing, and what he is going to do in our lives. Nitin Namdeo. In happy moments, praise God. In difficult moments, seek God. In quiet moments, worship God. In painful moments, trust God. Every moment, thank God. Rick Warren. Let me summarize. Don't be discouraged if you are not honored in your calling, in your home city. Don't be uh, deceited and think that God has distance in prayer. He doesn't. And remember, my friend, to honor God when you get your breakthroughs. Don't forget God no matter what. And I hope this message encourages you today. Let me just pray with you. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, Jesus came to make a difference in your life, friend. He came to take away all your fear, your shame, your guilt, and your condemnation. He came to give you life that is full of joy, full of peace. And I want to tell you, He came to give you everlasting life. In, in simple terms, you live forever. Only Jesus can do that, friend. Not many others have laid the claim, I am the way, the truth in the life. Only Jesus can do that. If you want to live forever today, if you want the gift of eternal life, which only comes through faith in Jesus Christ, why don't you just pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, just be Lord of my soul. Father, we praise you and thank you. Also believe there's no distance in prayer. But most of all, let us believe that whenever you have blessed us, that we will never forget you. Father, we pray for the word to come into our hearts today. I pray for anyone who is just there listening to your word, Lord, and that wants to receive you as a Savior, that they will just receive Jesus as Lord and you would come and live in their hearts by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. As I said, there's no distance in prayer. We're continually praying for people. Once they, you call us to tell us to pray for you, we pray. We meet every Thursday praying for uh, with a group of people to pray for you. I believe God answers our prayer. So let me pray with you today. If you're not well, just ask the Lord to touch you and heal you. Father, we pray for those that are unwell, that have indicated uh, they need prayer, Lord. And I ask today, as there is no distance in prayer, that you would heal them and take care of them. And whatever the nature of the need is, that you would help them through this ordeal in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Thank you for listening in and we will catch up next time.